Hi, it's Leslie Meredith with Break Folk Events and Media here in Dubai, and I'd like to introduce Paul Hazel from Geodis, who has just finished um, as part of a panel on risk and reward. Of course, we like the reward part better, right, uh, well, Absolutely, yeah, right. <laughs> Zero risk and 100% uh, reward. That's, yeah, that's, what, we we were, that's that. what we're looking for ideally. <laughs> right. Well, we would all love that. But tell me from your perspective, what is the biggest challenge for project forwarders right now and particularly in this region? In this region? Yeah, let's go with that. Um, I would say actually uh, business itself. I mean, uh, the Middle East has always been a hub, uh, the place where projects are going. Um, but I would say that there's been a it's gone a bit quieter in, the, in um, recent times, um, but the biggest, um, I wouldn't say the challenges are any different now to what they were, say, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's still the same, the similar sort of challenges that you always face on a project. Um, the difference is that um, there's probably more people out there wanting to do project forwarding. So more competitive? I think it's more competitive. Um, and there's people that are willing to take the risks just to be uh, have their name put in front of the of the clients. Oh, that's so interesting. But there's a danger in that. Of course there is, but you know, um, it depends on the company. So we, as a corporate company, we, we would take we would be risk aversive. To be honest with you, we would look at the risks, and it will go up through a uh, through a, a, a certain process to assess. Oh. Whereas, okay. whereas some companies don't have that same corporate processes. They have a lesser process. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but that's just the way that their, yeah, their companies sure. are. Um, and therefore, maybe they're less risk averse and willing to take more risk uh, in terms of a project. Mm -hmm. When you're uh, analyzing risk, that's sort of a, mm, a, a an umbrella sort of thing. So what, what factors do you count as having the most weight when you're doing that type of analysis? Um, well, one of the risks is having almost, you know, the, the information that's come from the EPC. Because we've been asked for things like fixed rates, for example, over a period of time, which in itself is a risk. But the risk is even is, is greater when you don't have the right information. You know, the, the, the type of cargo or the detailed cargo. And if you're moving into a, a, um, an emerging market area where there's, there's inherent risk, uh, politically, but also obviously from a transportation point of view, um, you don't have necessarily the time to do the studies that you'd like to do on the ground. So if you're moving a heavy piece of cargo, um, you don't always have the time to um, be able to get into that process of doing a road survey, doing route surveys, finding out what it is. So it's, it's, there's a whole bunch of risks in, in the RFQ stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so. How about the reward side? Are they? <laughs> I don't, we like that. Let's come back. Well, to the that reward side is becoming less and less, I think. <laughs> um, but the reward side is professional. Um, I mean, it's their professional reward. I mean, uh, reward. Sorry, that if you you know you're doing these jobs and, and you are a professional project forwarder, then you, you get that massive satisfaction. I know that doesn't pay the bills sometimes, but um, but I, uh, you do get a lot of satisfaction of, of uh, performing. On these projects, um, yes, you can. Obviously, there's the commercial reward, um, providing we go back to the risk, because it, as we said, risk and reward they go hand in hand, and we've got to mitigate those risks, control those risks, manage those risks. Sometimes you have to take the calculated risk, um, and but the, the other thing is you need to have that partnership with the client so that you can sit down and explain the risk to them, um, and try and come to some. Times you just have to come to a compromise. And out of that will come the reward that you've gained a partnership with someone and sat down and discussed exactly uh, what the issues are so we can work together in order to have a reward for both the owner, the EPC, and the forward. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Now, do you think it was helpful on this panel to have both forwarders and shippers sitting at the same table? Absolutely. Uh, and we've already had some discussions prior to this panel. Um, where we sat down and talked through things yeah. um, and actually I think we would have probably gone on for about two or three hours had we at the time. <laughs> um, not today, I mean in the previous discussion. Right, um, sure. So, uh, but between us it was, yeah, it was a very, very good discussion. Well that's good and that, 
I would imagine would help pave the way in the real world, if you will, outside the event world, right? It wouldn't be nice to think help. so. Uh, okay, we'll go with that, Paul. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you so much You're for welcome. sharing your views with us. All right, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.